I've been using the pre-release of Neo Vim 0.5 for about three or four weeks now. And as the official release of 0.5 has just come out, I thought it'd be a good time to take a look at what an up-to-date NeoVim experience can look like. In this video, I'm going to take you through the sort of config that I've got at the minute, the plugins that I'm using, um, and just show you kind of where it's at. Now, if you've not got the latest NeoVim installed, the easiest thing to do, I'm on Mac OS, it obviously varies OS to OS, but I can just do, if you've got Homebrew installed, you could just do a brew install near Vim and that'll put you the latest 0.5 on. The first big change with near Vim 0.5 is that Vim script can virtually be eliminated, not entirely, but more and more things now are being made with Lua instead. So I'm going to show you a lot of the plugins that I'm using, even though they might have started out life, that kind of thing um, written in Vim script. These days you can get the equivalent feature written with Lua. Now VimScript never made a lot of sense to me and I've never written a word of Lua, a, a line of Lua in my life, but even for somebody who's not particularly familiar with it, I think if you know something like JavaScript with some degree of competency, you can probably figure out Lua enough, copy and pasting bits of people's code from the internet to assemble your init file instead of it being init.vim. Um, it'll be init.lua, which is what I've got for my file now. Down below, you can see there's a link to my init lua file if you want to go and have a look at that and rob any bits from that. I've certainly done, written most of my lua file by grabbing other people's and amending it to, to suit my own needs. It's probably also worth getting something like lua format, which you can get from npm, installing that. And as long as you've got a package that's going to auto, auto format your code for you, it just makes it so much easier to start writing Lua because you probably haven't got a, an idea of where the braces go, where the braces don't go, where it needs a comma and where it doesn't. And obviously something like that is going to point out to you when you're writing the syntax wrong. So when you've got your init file written in Lua, it looks pretty similar as you would have had it before, but you can see it's just just slightly different in terms of how you specify options and things like that and how you core and start plugins running. TreeSitter is considered experimental until 0.6, which obviously this isn't, um, but I've been using it, you know, like I say, for three or four weeks now, not had any problems with it. In fact, that's a bit of a lie. I did have a problem with it at first, but only in regard to, I was running Prettier with Vim Prettier, the plugin, and quite often when I saved a file, I'd get errors coming up that were saying there was something to do with TreeSitter. However, since I've moved plugins, I've moved away from Vim Prettier, and I'm now using a, a plugin called Formatter, which I'll show you in a little bit, um, all those problems have gone away. But the, the key thing that you get from TreeSitter from an average end user like myself is the fact that your syntax highlighting for your language files can look so much nicer. So here's an example right now of me using my current favorite theme, which is Everforest. Um, and you can just see there's lots of sort of intricacies in the syntax highlighting that you get in those language files now, which is what TreeSitter provides. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of other things that it does as well but I'm not qualified to tell you what those things are. It's a case of just knowing that treats it as good. Okay. When I last wrote about Vim, I was using the unfortunately abbreviated Conqueror of Code plugin, or COG. And that plugin in itself could make use of LSPs to provide um, code completion and code intelligence, that sort of thing. The kind of thing that you'd be used to seeing if you use VS Code and the like. Now in NeoVim 0.5, it's got its own built-in LSP client. So the result of that is that you can use much lighter tools to get your LSP sort of stuff. So I've hooked together the, for completion, I'm using LSP Comp, which is C-O-M-P-E. Again, the, the links are down at the bottom. And I'm also using something called LSP Saga to give me the the sort of intelligence, the code intelligence feedback so that I can use hover pop-ups and go to next definition, previous definition, you know, in the diagnostics sort of information. And both of these tools, LSP Comp and LSP Saga, both written predominantly in Lua rather than something like VimScript. And at the minute, that's meant that I've not bothered adding anything else like snippets-wise or completion-wise other than just hooking it into LSP itself. And you need to install whatever languages, you need to install those language servers separately, whether that's via Node or whatever it is for the front-end language of your choice. So typically I'm using um, the TypeScript language server, 
and I'm also using the one um, from VS Code that provides HTML, CSS, SCSS, those sorts of completions and intelligence. And you can set that up in your init file so that you can tweak you know, what, what you want to be a warning, what you want to be an error, that sort of stuff. So I mentioned the plugin Formatter. That's one I've only recently started using, but it's been great because it's let me not just plumb in prettier, but also a formatter for Lua. So yeah, although it says, if you go to the formatter site, it will say it's very much work in progress. I found it to be great. I've not had any problems with formatter at all. I basically just hooked up prettier and Lua format, and it's doing everything that I could want it to do. The plugin that's made the biggest difference for me in this recent look at Vim has been Telescope, which is, it's an oversimplification to say that it's a, a tool that basically just makes lists and then lets you do things with those lists. But it's actually been able to supplant a number of other tools that I had to kind of piece together previously to give me the same sort of functionality. So as an example, I can use Telescope to give me my list of files if I want to find files in my project. I can use it to show me um, some idea of what's going on in Git in my project. I've got it as a live grepping tool, which you can then use the results of that grep. You could pipe it into a quick fix list and then use that quick fix list to make those find and replaces across all those files in one go. So shout out to the Primogen in that regard because he was watching his video and then reading a post um, on GitHub issues which explained how you could do that. Um, and it's just been great for that sort of thing. Perhaps best of all, Telescope just worked so easily. I thought it was going to be a load of my for getting it up and running, but it was as simple as installing the plugin, making sure you've got something in the background that can do the, the grepping for you. So I've got um, rip grep installed there um, and it just worked. And then it's just a case of deciding how you want the layout to look, which I've not done an awful lot of playing around with because the defaults have, have just really worked for me. Another great little plugin that I've put in, which is actually in the background uses Rust, but the, the sort of interface that gets it working with NeoVim is lower, is the Minimap, which you'll know the Minimap from Sublime, and if you've watched any of my other stuff, you'll know that I'm a huge Sublime text fan. Um, and this Minimap, I don't have it on all the time by default, but it's very easy. If you just want to look at the shape of a particular uh, file, you know, the, the shape of the code in that file, you can flick it on and, and have a look at that. Um, so. I don't use it a lot, but I tend to keep it around just because, I'll be honest, I just think it's pretty cool. It does have some uh, frustrations because where that minimap shows is actually another buffer, so or rather another window. So if you're doing Control w to shift around windows, it's going to end up sitting itself in the, the minimap window, which is not ideal, but I've not found a way around that. So I tend to have it off by default, but I think it's a great little plugin nonetheless. Lua line, as the name suggests, is a status line plugin, but is written in Lua. So I used to use Airline, and before that I'd used Lightline, um, and this is kind of an evolution of that. It doesn't really do anything you wouldn't have already seen in any of those other status line plugins. It just lets you configure it with Lua instead. Um, so I've got a fairly basic setup there. I've got my, you know, my mode on the left, file name. I've got a sort of basic Git status going on there, and, and um, diagnostics from LSP. And then over on the right, I've got more simple stuff like whereabouts I am in the file. Um, I'll get info on the left as well. There's also a, a comparable status line written in Lua, which is called Galaxy Line, which also looked really cool, but I ended up going with Lua Line simply because I just felt the documentation was a bit better and I was able to get my head around it and get it working a bit easier with Lua Line. So I can't really say for sure which of those two is the better, but I've been using Lua Line and it's absolutely fine. Last but not least is a plugin I've started to use called Hop. Now, if you're familiar with either Easy Motion or Ace Jump, you'll be instantly familiar with what Hop's going to do for you. You set a shortcut to your leader key, for example. I've got mine set to leader key J for jump and leader key L for line. And you can see there, if I do leader J, it puts markers next to all the jump points that I can go to in the that visible area of the buffer and then by pressing a couple of keys I jump to that exact point. Same thing for lines but obviously that gives you a simpler one where it just jumps you to the beginning of that line. That in itself is pretty cool and what's good about Hop because it's written in Lua is it's not annotating the buffer with those points either which I understand is, was a problem performance wise with previous implementations 
But the other cool thing that you can do is you can go into visual mode and start making a selection and then instantiate hop and use that to extend your visual selection to wherever hop is going to take you to. Um, and I found that pretty useful for some, you know, if you need to do a, a complex bit of selection. So you'll see there's more plugins in my init file, which, you know, support these more fancy plugins that I've shown you what they do in this video. You know, but I want you to just show you the fancy stuff, you know, the stuff that makes you sort of maybe raise an eyebrow and think about using Neovim. Now I've listed the GitHub repos for all the, the plugins that I've talked about down below. And I've also linked in my init file, so you can go and have a peek at that if you're curious how I got these set up. Like I say, I can't take credit for that. I've just basically ripped off other people's code around the internet, but that's what being a coder is all about. If you think you found a better plugin for any of those jobs, please let me know in the comments below. If this was useful, please give it a like. And if you want more tech, web, keyboard stuff, subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you again sometime.